But if I have two minutes left, I know I'm a little over two minutes. I got started late, though, so I did keep track of this. <laughs> the ship and the rafts, I'm going to conclude with this because this, is, I think, puts it in a nutshell why I'm so proud to be a Catholic and why converting into the Catholic Church is important. It's not just another alternative. Imagine the founder of a country building an amazing ship to take people over to a new country he founded on the other side of the ocean. And he gathers them. He summons them special with a special invitation. Some come and some don't. But those who come arrive on the port and they see this beautiful ship prepared for them to go across the ocean. And they look across the ocean and they can already see the glow on the horizon of a city called the Celestial City. And they get on this ship, and it's so exciting, and they have the introductory meeting, and they meet the captain and the crew, and they're shown all of the navigational equipment and the documents so they know where they're going, and they're in good hands, and they've got food and showers, and they have all this wonderful stuff on the ship to get them across to the other side. And the ship is the church. The land they're being called from is the world. The captain is the pope. The clergy are the crew the navigational equipment are the scriptures and the tradition. And down below, there are places to take showers, baptism, get cleaned up, confession, a great meal provided every day, the Eucharist, all of these wonderful things. And the ship sets sail, and everybody's happy. And to speed it up here a little bit, we get halfway across the ocean, and some people get disgruntled, and they say, who is this captain to be telling me what to do? And the crew isn't so friendly anymore, and they're getting bossy, and some of them aren't even that good, and the people aren't as friendly as they used to be, and some of them don't even smell so good anymore. And the captain's telling me what to do in my own cabin. He has no business to do that. And they all make a plot, and they go down below in the bottom of the boat, and they find wood, and they find ropes, and they lash them together, and they make rafts. And at night, they throw their rafts off the side of the boat, and they get off, and now they are free. No longer do they have to submit to this captain telling them what to do and what to believe. No longer do they have to eat that wretched food day after day. And no longer do they have to go take that shower and tell some guy what they did wrong. They're free. How many sh rafts are there floating now around the ship? 33,000 or who knows how many? You count them. I was my own. The closer those rafts stay to the ship, the better chance they have to get to the other side. And everything good that they have on the raft, where did they get it from? I didn't realize as a Protestant that everything I had good I had gotten from the ship. The canon of scripture. I threw five sacraments out, but the two I had, where did I get them from? The definition of the Trinity and the hyperstatic union of the two natures of Christ. Where did I get this from? I didn't invent this. I didn't come up with it. I got it from the ship. But you know, I realized something later on, that I was not one of those who jumped off the ship. I was born on a raft. I didn't even know there was a ship. I thought this is the way God planned it. All of you get on your rafts and we'll see you on the other side. Take your suffering well. Then one day I see this big thing on the horizon. And I say to the raft, people on my raft, what's that? We don't want to talk about it. <laughs> so I yell to the raft next to me and the other, Hey, what's that over there? We don't want to talk about it, we said. Why not? Because it's the ship. <laughs> what ship? What are you talking about ship? What am I doing out here on a raft if there's a ship? <laughs> Do you remember the rainstorm last night? I would have... Wait a minute, I said. I started reading the few scraps of information we had on our raft that we had taken from the ship. I started reading and thinking and asking questions, and before you know it, I get back on the ship. January, uh, May 22nd, 1994. My family and I, we got back on that ship. And I went straight to the captain, and I said, Captain, there's a bunch of protestants out there. They're rebels. Let's load up the cannons and blast them out of the water. <laughs> That's not what I said. I felt like it the first year or two because my wife, her first comment was, after going to our very first mass, is, I am so angry. I said, why are you angry? She said, I'm angry at my Protestant past for lying to me, but I'm even more angry at the Catholics because they never told us we were wrong. They never explained this to us. My first reaction on the ship was, give me the biggest, loudest megaphone you have. 
because I, my mom and dad are out there, my brothers and sisters out there, my brothers and sisters in Christ are out there, and I don't know, they may even love the Lord more than some of the people on this ship. They may love the founder of the country, but they don't know about the ship, and if they do, they've been lied to. Give me that megaphone, and I started for the rest of my life, I'm going to be doing this. I'm shouting off the bow of that ship to all of those who need to be called back into the fullness of the faith, because on that ship we have a captain, we have navigational equipment, we have the fullness of the faith and if you want to get to heaven and you want to bring your families with you you better be on the ship and don't ever try to get off and thank you very much and God bless you